Welcome everybody to our first lecture. In this lecture, we are going to analyze a position in which white wins by carrying out a nice combination. First, let's talk about combinations in general. Solving chess combinations is a very important aspect of tactical play training, which helps to improve imagination and vision of the chess board, which are very important tools for every chess player who wants to improve his play. So, Solving chess combinations must be part of your daily training routine. Solving one combinational position per day is enough in case you pay some effort in solving the position. Now, let's move to the position. Here, white to play and wins. I suggest that you pause the video and try to think about the position for 10 to 20 minutes trying to find a winning idea rather than calculating deep variations after spotting the winning idea try to calculate the consequences of your move in some depth then get back to the video to see the analysis of the position Okay, here we see that most of white's pieces are aiming at black's king. The queen on h4, the rook on g1, the bishop on e3, and the bishop on d3. Also, the dark squares around the black king are very weak. And the bishop on c5 still needs time to get back to f8 for defense. A fact that white needs to exploit immediately. So, here the move rook takes g7 comes to mind, and this is the right move. But we still need to calculate the consequences in depth. This move not only destroyed black's defense over the dark squares, but also it's creating strong threats against the h7 pawn, which is now attacked by the queen on h4, the rook on g7, and indirectly by the bishop on d3. And this is an important point of the combination. So, how should black respond? First, Let's calculate the forced line. This is a good way to analyze a position. So, king takes g7. But now, the dark squares around the black king are very weak, and white penetrates immediately with bishop h6, check. And now, black's forced to retreat to h8 or else get mated with queen g5 check. Now white plays bishop g5, attacking the knight on f6, and indirectly the queen on d8. So, black's forced to defend his dark squares with bishop e7, but now, can you spot the winning move for white in this position? The move is f takes e6, opening the diagonal for the bishop on d3, threatening to take the knight on f6 and conduct a mate on h7, and simply black has no defense. So, Black cannot just take the rook on g7. Also, black cannot ignore the presence of the rook on g7 and play something like bishop takes d4. As the h7 square is now under heavy attack from the queen on h4, the rook on g7, and the bishop on d3. And white immediately plays, rook takes h7, check. Black's forced to take with his knight, 
or else a mate will follow. So knight takes h7, and now white has f6, opening the diagonal of the bishop on d3 and threatening mate on d uh, on h7, which cannot be defended actually. So let's return to the starting position. What else black can play here? A logical move to analyze is e takes f5, trying to block the diagonal of the bishop on d3. But here white has more than one way to to win this position, depending on the weakness of the dark squares. One move is knight to d5, deflecting the knight on f6 from the defense of the h7 square. The knight cannot be taken on d5 because white plays queen takes h7 checkmate so what should black play if black takes the rook on g7 white simply plays queen h6 check and after king h8 knight takes f6 wins immediately threatening a mate on h7, black must sacrifice his queen to avoid getting mated. So, what else black can play here? Here black can try rook to g8, challenging white's rook on g7, but this actually doesn't help, because now the f7 square is unprotected, and white simply plays rook takes f7, threatening to take the knight and mate on h7. So black's forced to play rook to g7 to protect the h7 square. But now after rook takes g7, King takes g7. Bishop g5. And now black cannot defend his dark squares anymore. And white simply winning. So. The move knight d5. In this position, wins for white. Another move that wins also is bishop g5. Attacking the knight on f6. And after, king takes g7. White has queen h7, queen h6 check. King h8. And even better than taking the knight on f6 and force black to sacrifice his queen to avoid mate, white has bishop takes f5, renewing the threats to the h7 square, and after bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, black's position collapses, and white's winning. So, we can conclude that black has to challenge white's rook on g7 immediately with rook to g8. And maybe this is black's best try for defense on the position. Although white is winning also here in this variation. Now, how should white proceed? 
White has the move. Rook takes g8 check, which wins for white. Another move that wins the position is rook takes f7, but we will focus on the move rook takes g8, which is a more direct one. So, how should black recapture the rook on g8? Black has three ways to recapture with the queen on d8, with the knight on f6, and with the king. Queen takes g8 is impossible because the knight on f6 is undefended. And knight takes g8 allowed the move f6, which opened the diagonal for the bishop on d3, threatening mate on h7. And after the forced replay, knight takes f6. White simply plays bishop g5, attacking the knight on f6, threatening to take the knight on the next move and conduct mate on h7. So, black must capture the rook with, with his king. But now, white exploits the weakness of the dark squares with bishop g5, attacking the knight immediately. Now, black is forced to retreat his bishop to e7 to defend his dark squares. But now, white continues to increase the pressure against the f6 knight with knight to e4. And now, the knight cannot be defended anymore on f6 and it has to move somewhere. So, how should black respond? If black takes on e4, this leaves the bishop on e7 unprotected and white simply plays bishop takes e7, attacking the queen and threatening f6 in the next move. So, after a queen move like queen b6, white simply plays f6, threatening to mate with queen g3 check. So, black cannot leave the, cannot leave the e7 square unprotected, so he's forced to play knight to d5, to cover the e7 square. But now, white plays f6, all the same, attacking the bishop and threatening to penetrate with his queen on h6. So, how should black replay? Actually, the move that saves the bishop and prevents queen h6 is bishop f8. But this move loses immediately because of the double attack of the queen on h4 and the knight on d3 to the h7 square. White simply makes a discovery with his knight, with, with the move knight to d6, and the mate on h7 cannot be defended. So, black cannot move his bishop from e7, but now, there is nothing black can do in this position after something like queen b6, the discovery with knight to c5, attacking the bishop on d7 and threatening the check on h7, which leads to mate actually wins the game immediately. A nice combination by white, which as I mentioned before, depended on two main factors. The weakness of the dark squares around the black king and the latent power of the bishop on d3. Hope that you enjoyed the lecture and see you in the next lecture.